The mission of the Idaho State Police is providing public safety across the state of Idaho through law enforcement excellence. Providing education to alcohol licensees is an important function of the Idaho State Police Alcohol Beverage Control. This free training is being provided to promote compliance and understanding of the laws of the state of Idaho associated with alcohol beverage licenses. At the end of this training video, there is contact information for your local ABC offices. Please feel free to contact your local ABC detectives with any questions. Thank you. Objectives. Know why enforcement is a priority. Idaho's three-tier system. Identify a retail alcohol license. Know legal ramifications of violations. Know the rules governing licensed premises. Section 1, Objectives. Three-tier system. Alcohol licensing. Hours and days of alcohol sales. Alcohol advertising. Goal. Provide licensees, managers, and their staff with a basic understanding of state alcohol beverage laws in order to operate licensed premises legally and safely. One of the visions of the Idaho State Police is to enhance public safety. This is an example of an alcohol-related crash. Two females left a retail alcohol establishment. Occupant 1 had a BAC of .194. Occupant 2 had a BAC of 0.117. Both were pronounced dead after traveling 104 miles per hour in a posted 20 mile per hour zone. As you can see by the graph in front of you, alcohol and drug impairment is the highest factor in Idaho motor vehicle fatal crashes. Below are statistics of college students between the ages of 18 and 24. This slide contains additional information relating to the safety of alcohol. I'm Jeremy Pisco with the Idaho Beer and Wine Distributors Association. Idaho's beer and wine products are governed by a three-tier system, a system that's intended to separate brewers and suppliers from distributors and wholesalers and from retailers, grocers, and bars. The three-tier system helps to facilitate state and local decision-making regarding alcohol products. It's also created to efficiently collect taxes. Another function of the three-tier system is to promote responsible consumption and community safety, and to balance the competition and regulation while maintaining an orderly marketplace for alcohol beverages. The three-tier system comes from the failure of America's prohibition practices. Prior to Prohibition, saloons were becoming more than just a place to have a drink. Among other things, they cashed checks and they extended credit. They supplied mailing addresses. They provided sleeping quarters and public facilities. And although some say there's no such thing as a free lunch, they did offer a free lunch. And it included things like salty foods to get patrons in, to keep them drinking, and to keep them drinking until their entire paycheck was gone. Those sorts of practices led to what's considered the Tide House. Brewers enter the equation as suppliers of more than just beer. If a saloon operator agreed to serve only one brand of beer, the brewer would provide everything from food to artwork, refrigeration supplies, electric signs, mirrors, furniture, spittoons, glasswares. They would pay licensing fees and they would take care of virtually anything else within the four walls of the saloons. In that respect, saloon keepers had become subsidized servants of the breweries. And by 1910, 70% of all saloons were either owned by, in debt to, or indentured to the breweries. The 21st Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified in December of 1933. The 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment, which was the amendment that created prohibition. John D. Rockefeller commissioned attorney Raymond Fosdick and practicing engineer Albert Scott to study the successes and failures of alcohol regulation in other nations. Fosdick and Scott's findings outline how to avoid history of alcohol issues repeating themselves. Fosdick and Scott's findings are published in a book that is still used today towards liquor control. Among their findings, they found most efficient was statewide alcohol enforcement. In other words, leaving regulation of alcohol products to the individual states. 
They recommended multiple licensing classifications to recognize the inherent differences between beer, wine, and spirits. They recommended regulation of hours of sale, particularly for on-premise consumption. They identified that licensees should belong to the establishment as well as to the owner. They recommended certain restrictions on advertising, as well as price control mechanisms. Also, they recognized that taxation objective should be rational and for the purposes of social control rather than strictly for revenue enhancement. But in particular, they also prohibited the tied house relationships between manufacturers and retailers by creating the distribution tier. The distribution tier is the vehicle which provides assurance that no tied house relationship can exist. Without the three-tier system, the natural tendency is to vertically integrate. With vertical integration, the supplier controls the entire chain. By requiring the distribution tier, it ensures that a local business, locally licensed, is promoting products responsibly within their communities. As an additional benefit, the Division of Alcohol Beverage Control relies on the distribution tier to assist in the regulatory function. The three-tier system also helps ensure that no one tier grows so large that it can outmuscle regulators or outmuscle any one of the other tiers. A license is needed to dispense alcohol in the state of Idaho. The licensee must have appropriate endorsement for the type of alcohol to be sold. This is an example of an Idaho State Police retail alcohol beverage license. The highlighted information refers to the person or entity to whom a retail alcohol license is issued. Original current licenses must be signed and prominently displayed in the premise. Endorsements will be listed on the license. The alcohol industry in the state of Idaho is regulated by Idaho Code Title 23 and IDAPA rules. City and county ordinances may also apply. Please check with your local authorities regarding these ordinances. If a violation occurs, possible legal ramifications are criminal citation, arrest, administrative violation. If a violation occurs against a licensee, legal action may be taken, which could result in administrative violation notice and or criminal complaint. Additional consequences may include compromised public safety, loss of employment, legal fees, loss of reputation, and or sales. A licensed premise is defined as the building and property used by the licensee for the sale of alcohol. The premise is identified by the floor plan and diagram submitted to ABC. If remodels or building modifications occur, the licensee must submit an updated diagram to ABC. A place is defined as any room of any premise where there is a bar, where alcohol, bar supplies, and equipment are kept, and where alcoholic beverages are prepared, mixed, and served for consumption. A licensee must purchase beer and wine for resale from a wholesaler or distributor licensed in the state of Idaho. Liquor must be purchased from the Idaho State Liquor Division. It cannot be sold by the bottle, and retailers can only sell liquor by the drink. Spirit-based beverages exceeding 14% alcohol by volume shall be considered as liquor and sold only through the division system. State law sets the hours of sale for all licensed alcoholic beverage establishments at 1 a.m. Counties and cities can extend the hour to 2 a.m. Please check with your local authority for your hours of sale. Beer and wine sale hours are 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. Beer and wine does not have to be locked up after closing hours. Liquor sale hours are 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. Open bottles must be locked up after sale hours. Sealed bottles do not have to be locked up. Alcohol sales stop at the mandated time. Open liquor is locked up, beer and wine is stored. Alcohol consumption ends 30 minutes later. All alcohol left on the tables or bar is poured down the drain or disposed of. Patrons can remain in the premise as long as the licensee allows them, but no alcohol can be sold or consumed after the mandated time. Private parties in a bar still need to follow hours of sale. There are no restrictions on days of sale for beer and wine. Liquor may not be sold, offered for sale, or given away on Sunday, Memorial Day, Thanksgiving, or Christmas. Cities and counties can allow sales on Sunday, Memorial Day, and Thanksgiving. 
Liquor cannot be sold on Christmas Day. All law enforcement officers have the right to inspect licensed liquor, beer, and or wine premises. The licensee and or employees must allow the officer in to examine the premises. Idaho Code prohibits outside advertising of any brewer or trade name, trademark, or label of any brand of beer. Here is an example of outside beer advertising. The image on the left is an example of an illegal form of advertising. The image on the right is a legal form of advertising. Idaho Code prohibits outside advertising of the handling or sale of liquor. Keg receipts and stickers required. Required information on State of Idaho form, purchaser, vehicle transporting keg, address where consumed. False information reported on the form is illegal. The image on the right is an example of a keg sticker. It is illegal to sell alcohol to the following. Any person actually, apparently, or obviously intoxicated. An habitual drunkard. An interdicted person. Here are legal definitions of actual, apparent, and obvious. If a patron in your premise is showing apparent signs of intoxication, then you cannot serve them alcohol, sell them alcohol, allow them to possess or consume alcohol. Signs of intoxication. Watch for customers who lose their concentration and train of thought during conversation. Look for bobbing heads and drooping eyelids. Speech patterns. Talk to your customers and watch for these signs of intoxication. Here are some common indicators of intoxicated individuals. Below are suggestions to prevent over-service.
When cutting someone off, be polite. Remember, people that have been drinking have the potential to lose their sense of reasoning. Tell the person that state law requires you to stop alcohol sales, service, and or possession when signs of intoxication are present. Let them know that you value them as a customer, but state law is very specific and you do not want to get in trouble. Do not argue, but be firm. Offer to get or sell them a non-alcoholic beverage. Offer to call a cab for them so they do not drive. <laughs>